Well, greetings from Silverado Canyon, a canyon coming out of the Western Peninsula Ranges here in Southern California. I'm in these parts a lot, uh, mainly focusing in on the Santiago Peak Volcanics and the Peninsula Range Batholith, these igneous rocks. I find them very interesting. But today, I'd like to give the sedimentary rocks a little love. And these ones behind me, we're gonna look at closer and another member of this formation. And what's great about these is they were laid down in the Cretaceous age of the dinosaurs, these sediments were deposited. Why don't you join me and see if we can find anything interesting. So before we go outside and actually look at these formations, I just wanted to give you some context. So I'm using this paper by these brilliant people here. The Santa Ana Mountains is the name of the mountain range of the Western Peninsula Range. It's the Santa Ana Mountains here in Southern California. And we got a great stratigraphy column here. I just want to give you some context of where I'm at. So this is uh, obviously modern day way up here. Here's millions of years. Uh, this is the Cenozoic. So we got a lot of activity, a lot of deposition going on. But back here in the Mesozoic, that's where I'm always interested in. So you can see here way back in the Jurassic, you've got the Peninsula Range Batholith. Uh, th these are the magma chambers and plumbing system that feed the Santiago Peak Volcanics. And I have a lot of videos on these formations here. And here's the Bedford Canyon formation. These are the Jurassic Age sediments that were intruded into by this magma. Uh, so you get some horn fells and things like that. And I've done uh, a lot of pictures and videos featuring all these. So I'm skipping up here. Now this is still Mesozoic. This is late Cretaceous. And we're gonna be looking at the Lad formation, specifically uh, two members of the Lad Formation. You got the Baker Canyon member and the Holtz Shale member. And we'll look at both of those today. So the first uh, member we'll look at is the Baker Canyon member. As you can see here, it consists of uh, sandstone with conglomerate and fossiliferous beds. The beds here show many sedimentary structures and mollusk and trace fossils. And then as you can see here, the Baker Canyon transitions into the Holtz Shale at the narrowest part of Silverado Canyon. That's where I'm at right now. So let's go ahead, take a closer look at the Baker Canyon member. So let's start off first by getting an overview shot of the Baker Canyon member of the Lad Formation. Sedimentary rock, again laid down in the Cretaceous and you can see it's well bedded in this general angle here. Not the safest outcrop to check out, so make sure you look both ways before you go up close. But a lot of the details within the Baker Canyon member are really cool, and I'd love to share them with you. Let me get across the street safely. <laughs> See what I mean? It's pretty close to the road, so be careful you come out here. Be mindful of the traffic. All right, so here's up close. Here we can see a, a sandstone section. Uh, we got a little bit of a fossil right there, marine fossil, some sort of bivalve. It also mentioned we would have conglomerate, which is coincidentally right here. Take a look at that. And we even have fossils within the conglomerate. And check out those clasts. Those are igneous. No doubt coming from the Santiago Peak Volcanics. Pretty cool. Uh, we also have these little calcite veins coming through here, but that's pretty cool. Really handsome looking clasts. Uh, there's a bit of mud here with a fossil. That's great. And then it transitions back to sandstone. And then we got this really cool layer here. This is the fossiliferous mudstone layer. And can you just see how many fossils are within just this one layer. Here's some more footage of that fossiliferous mudstone layer. Again, these are calcite veins, but just chock full of marine fossils. Look at this one, that's great. No doubt that this was at an ocean, right? In the Cretaceous. This was all under underwater. 
based on these fossils. Okay. And you can see the mudstone lens kind of continues and pinches out right there. Let's see if we can get a little higher and check out uh, the bottom side of this conglomerate layer. Let's see if we can make it over closer to this outcrop. Watching out for snakes. Oh, very cool. So this, if you can see the angle of the beds is like this. So this is like the bottom edge of that conglomerate layer. The uh, layers underneath it are softer. They're eroding away quicker. And so it's leaving kind of this overhang of the conglomerate. But yeah, those clasts are definitely all igneous. Again, from the Santiago Peak Volcanics and also the Western Peninsula Range Batholith. All right, continuing up the outcrop to see if we can find anything else interesting here. Here's that uh, mudstone layer, fossiliferous mudstone layer again. Just riddled with uh, little shells, bivalves, mollusks. Oh, there's a clast here. It's an igneous clast. That's pretty interesting. And then right here, check this out. Little fossil, like a, not a trace fossil, but a fossil mold of a shell. See that? That's cool. So, so far it kind of looks like this fossiliferous mudstone layer is the feature of this member of the Lad Formation, Baker Canyon. Oh, look at that right there. What is that, Turritella? Is that what you, those type of uh, gastropod or something? I'm not a biologist, but I do appreciate the fossils when I see them. See this one? Excellent. There's our conglomerate layer continuing. Ooh, another fossiliferous mudstone layer. This one looks really crowded. Look at that. Ooh. Now imagine these critters were living at the same time as the dinosaurs. Because again, this was laid down in the late Cretaceous. A lot of evidence of marine life. These guys were healthy. I apologize in advance for those who have arachnophobia, but I almost walked right into this guy. Gal. Getting a little too treacherous to keep going that way and really the outcrop just gets buried so it, it's just more the sandstone so i think we saw what we wanted to see here we we saw the sandstone right and then there was a conglomerate layer with clasts of uh, igneous rock presumably the santiago peak volcanics and then we had these lenses of mudstone fossiliferous mudstone appearing as well all bedded yeah, it's just great. Great outcrop, Cretaceous. I mean, this is old stuff, man. So cool. All right, why don't we uh, make our way back down and we'll check out the other member of the Lad Formation uh, across the street. It overlies this formation, uh, this member, excuse me. It's called the Holtz Shale member of the Lad Formation. Let's go check that out. safely across the street. We were looking at the outcrop right there of the Baker Canyon member. And this right here is Silverado Creek, the raging Silverado Creek. <laughs> um, but notice the angle of the beds. They're like this, right? And they do continue on this side. So this creek 
must have uh, taken advantage of some natural fault in this member to cut its way through. Um, again, it continues on this side. This particular outcrop has some really cool sedimentary details. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? Maybe soft sediment deformation going on there. Got little concretions. Now, I don't know if you could tell in the video, but from here to there is pretty narrow. I think they, they, they call this the Silverado Narrows because the creek was able to cut through here. But as we walk this way, we are going to uh, find the Holtz shell, which is overlying this Baker Canyon member. And again, the Baker Canyon member has conglomerate sandstones and mudstones, fossiliferous mudstones. So it's more resistant to erosion, which is why it's so narrow here. But once we hit the shale, the canyon opens up. So I will show you the, oh, look what we got here again. More fossils. Again, the Baker Canyon member. Sorry if I'm repeating myself, but that's how I get it in my brain. Repetition. Oh, look at that. It's a heart. That might be featured on a, a future post. Wow, there's a lot of little shells all in this. Can you see those? Beautiful. All right. Awesome. So let's make our way to this contact. Oh man, I keep getting ahead of myself. Look at it, here's some more of that conglomerate layer right there. Excellent. So again, this is gonna eventually turn into the Holtz shale. But look, at, I think you can already tell. Do you see how it just opens up? The canyon opens up because the shale erodes so much quicker. So when this creek made its way through and it hit the shale, look at how far over it goes. So that's how you can tell uh, when one member ends and another member begins. Let's get up close and personal with the Holtz shale over here and see if we can find anything interesting. Ooh, I'm a guest here. That's probably a bobcat. Harmless to me, probably. They're, they're bigger cousins. The mountain lions are a little scarier, but it's just too dang hot, I think, for them to be out right now. You just wanna avoid uh, early mornings and dusk. That's when they're out, but they're, they're, they're typically pretty shy. All right, I didn't walk too far, and we're starting to see evidence of the Holt Shale. So this is still that fossiliferous mudstone. I believe the Holt Shale interfingers with the Baker and Canyon member, but look at right here, look at the change in color. This beautiful blue-gray, classic Holt shale. How about that color, huh? Okay, this looks like the, the bigger cousin, the mountain lion. Looks like he did a little skirt in the mud there. Let's hope uh, he or she is fast asleep somewhere. It's just too hot. At least I like to think so. Carrying on. Okay, so let's get additional context for the Holtz Shale, member of the Lad Formation. So the Baker Canyon transitions into the Holtz Shale at the narrowest part of Silverado Canyon. That's where we just were. The shale weathers easily to form valleys or low-lying areas. We've seen that. The Holtz member therefore can be best seen as the narrows open up to the west of the Baker Canyon outcrops. This site is known as the Lad Canyon Narrows and is popular for collecting Cretaceous marine fossils, such as Foraminifera, bivalves, gastropods, and ammonites. Additionally, rare fossils of Cretaceous vertebrates have been found in the Lad Formation, including shark teeth and fragments of hadrosaur dinosaurs. Holy smokes! So here's the interesting thing about the dinosaurs. You know, I keep saying Cretaceous, right? So you would think like, oh, there's gotta be dinosaur fossils here. And we have some, they found some in Orange County. This is the only place in Orange County they found some is within this Holtz shale member. But they just found fragments of a hadrosaur. So 
what's interesting if, is if you play back time, this area was all an ocean. There was no land here. So what's a hadrosaur doing out here? Well, they think that it was probably a carcass east of here, uh, probably getting fed on, and then bits of it floated out to the sea and sank and were buried in the fine muds and silts uh, that later became the Holtz shale member. So isn't that kind of a cool story that, uh, again, there's, there was no land right here. It was just ocean, but we have dinosaur fossils. That's the reason why we don't have as many. Um, but the ones we have, the only way they could have gotten there is being washed out to sea, maybe during a storm from a river or something, a carcass got thrown out or whatever. So that, isn't that interesting? Pretty cool. Here's some examples of fossils that they found in the Holtz Shale. Look at, we've got shark teeth. These are the uh, bits of dinosaur bone they found. They've even found ammonite. Uh, this gastropods from here, and as well as this bivalve. Last time I was here, I think I saw a lot of these. Will we find a shark tooth today? Probably not, but it's interesting that that's what they found here. More evidence that this area was an ocean. Would you take a look at the color of this? Poorly bedded brown gray micaceous shale. I just can't get over the color. I love this, this gray color. All right, I found my first fossil. So this is actually a fossil mold. So the shell's gone, but the impression of this little bivalve shell is right there within the shale. How cool is that? Here's some more fossil molds. Again, not the shell, but the imprint that it's left. Okay, our first legit fossil right here. Bivalve. Now remember, this guy was alive at the same time as some of the dinosaurs. Can't help but notice this layer of concretions right here. There's some here too right next to it we have another bivalve beautiful Woo! would you look at the detail on that one that's a bivalve right there and then we got another fossil mold there Ooh, little cluster right here very cool Oh, wow, check this one out. Wow, okay, that's a definite bivalve right there. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh man, they're, they're all over here. This is a good bed. But look at that, huh? That's incredible. A fossil mold of a bivalve in the Holtz shale member of the Lad Formation. Beautiful. Yes, I just climbed a little bit further up this narrow canyon in here, and I was rewarded with this fossiliferous specimen. This looks more like fine sandstone, but check out this. Again, I'm not a biologist. I think that's a gastropod. Turatella or something like that. But man, that's a cool specimen right there. Huh? And then you just got tons of bivalves. They're all just mangled in here. And then it's kind of eroding off right here. Check it. These things are just chock full of mainly bivalves. Very awesome. Look at that thing. Okay, we're going to move on. I mean, we're going to stay with the Holtz shale, but as you can see, the the beds are dipping this way. So at this angle, we're seeing the top of the bedding plane. But as the creek ran this way, it eventually went, it got diverted this way. So if the beds continue, then perhaps this outcrop over here will be the cross section of the beds or the side of it. So we'll go over there and check that out and see what's going on over there. Still making my way over there, but it looks like my guess was correct. It looks like the beds are better exposed over there. But check out this concretion. 
with the beautiful calcite crystals growing. I don't know how much that's coming through, but it's pretty shiny and glisteny. Well, this outcrop is decomposing. I mean, look at how crumbly this is, which is, I guess, normal for shale. Hard to find the bedding planes, but there's one layer right there that's chock full of concretions. It kind of retains the same dip as we had seen before. Pretty cool. You wonder what was deposited in that layer back way back when to, to create this irritation, so to speak, to precipitate all these concretions. Uh, there's some right here. Would you like to see one up close? Let's see if I can get you up here. Ah, uh, yes. Concretion. As you can see, we got uh, differential erosion going on here where the host rock, the shale's eroding away quicker than the concretion. So that's why it's protruding out of the outcrop. Very cool. Got another one here. Let's continue. All right, the beds were pretty steep over there, but as we keep moving this way, as you can see, they start to flatten out. Based on what I've read, they said there is lenses of uh, fine-grained sandstone that appear and disappear, kind of pinch in and pinch out. But this is a handsome outcrop right here. Beautiful. All right, the lighting's not the best, but we'll have to work with this. But here's a nice outcrop of the Holtz Shale. Micaceous shale or silt stones with inner bedded fine grained sands. I think you can see those in there. A marine environment. And we already found marine fossils in it. Beautiful, beautiful outcrop. Okay, so just to review, um, that's where we started at those narrows right there. So that's the Baker Canyon member, more resistant to erosion, kind of at this angle. And the creek broke through that and then ran into the overlying Holtz shale member. And look what the creek did to it. I mean, look at this whole flat area, even across that way. It just washed a lot of it out of here because that shale just is easily erodible. So that's kind of interesting. Got the narrows and then it just opens up. And as we saw, as we were down there, the, uh, the creek is still working. Well, it's not working right now because of our drought, but we get a lot of rain sometimes in big bursts. So I think a lot of the erosion happens in, in spurts like that. But this is a good overview to show that narrows pinch and then it opens out into this flat area, which is where the Holtz shale member is. Well, thanks for joining me as we explored these two members of the Lad Formation, both late Cretaceous in age, which is pretty remarkable that, you know, all this was deposited when some dinosaurs were still roaming the earth. First, we saw the, the Baker Canyon member, conglomerates, sandstones, and that fossiliferous mudstone layer. That was my favorite. And then we went through the narrows and came out and explored the Holtz Shale. Beautiful outcrop. I, I love it near the beginning of the outcrop. Uh, the, the outcrop's harder, you know. Uh, I guess you're looking at the, the top of the, the bedding plane. So it was real fun to check that out and see so many uh, fossil molds of different uh, mollusks or gastropods and bivalves. Really cool. Didn't find a shark tooth, but you know what? After it rains, maybe I can come down here and check it out. So again, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Go ahead and see you on the next one. Little